throughout New Zealand at the moment, uh, we're getting older. <coughs> um, next week uh, on the show, we will be talking about New Zealand's declining population. So I'm not, and the only reason that our population, and we will talk after 12 o'clock about this as well, to do with the latest immigration stats, because they are horrifying. If you thought they were bad last month, you check out this month's, the latest statistics that have come out of the Department of Statistics to do with immigration. We'll be talking about this after 12 o'clock today. But many of those people who were not so much children, but probably young adults in the 1960s, have of course now retired. And um, they lived through a relatively benign era, the 1960s, um, where you could, if you were so disposed, take advantage of government incentives to buy a house um, with cheaper money in the 1960s, get yourself on, and then your house, to a large extent, became your superannuation package as well. Also, though, in the 1960s, there were very generous superannuation packages, uh, for, for, for mostly for public servants in this country. They were well subsidised and supported by the state, uh, and um, people have retired relatively well. So this generation of baby boomers who's retiring will probably be the best off in the history of New Zealand in terms of um, their wherewithal. Yes, but remember I also talked to you about that disparity of income and I've said that one of the things that's so true of New Zealand in 2024 compared to 1964 is the huge disparities of income um, and that where roughly we were quite egalitarian in our income and in our assets and how we spent our money in the 1960s, um, that isn't true anymore too. Well, that's also flowed through into the aged care sector where there are hugely expensive and beautiful, in fact, we've advertised some of those retirement villages and homes um, on this particular uh, um, radio station, or, well, sorry, media station, it's a much better description. Um, we've advertised some of those, and people retiring into beautifully manicured, magnificent homes um, in a lovely gated community somewhere with all sorts of amenities, and living a retirement that I would suggest to you is probably better than the life they've led. Um, and very happy about it as well. Mm. But equally, there are people who are not, and they have ended up in a particular worst of all worlds position where they tended to rent uh, during their... They weren't earning necessarily high income or making the right investments. There's probably a bit of uh, yin and yang there as well. And they have retired and they end up needing rest home care. And the Aged Care uh, Association now is making the point that as huge numbers of baby boomers now flock into the market, you're finding that disparity at both ends. So there's nothing wrong with all the retirement villages that are going up like Topsy at the moment and having a great time and uh, providing uh, the wherewithal for their retirees. No, it's the next lot, this, this, this lot down, if you like, the bottom. And the rest homes uh, are struggling to cope given the lack of funding for it. Um, we're going to talk now to the Deputy Chair of Age Concern, Warwick Dunn, on just that issue. Warwick, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Pleasure, Michael. Good morning to you. Now, I, I think I've adequately described it, the sort of disparity there. Can you just take me through, if I don't have a home, or if even if I do, and it's not worth much, or I've rented my entire life and I've got to 65 and I don't have necessarily a brilliant KiwiSaver, and superannuation's been a bit of a struggle because I might have broken up or the kids needed a bit of mm. handout or I didn't have a particularly good job or I was made redundant or whatever. Um, how does it work for me if I get to the stage where I need rest care or home care in this country? So if you are in that position, and uh, certainly as a sector we believe increasingly there will be more people who are exactly in that position for some of the reasons you described earlier on, um, you would fall uh, under uh, what's termed the asset test level. Um, so anybody coming into aged care has two levels of two types of assessment. One is the care level that you need and the other is your financial status. And if you sit below a financial threshold, which is currently around the $270,000 mark in terms of having capital, 
um, and uh, don't have a high level of, of income, so typically just relying on uh, New Zealand super, then you would become uh, uh, what is known as a fully funded uh, client. So that's the state stepping in um, and paying for your um, care needs uh, in, in the care home. Right. Um, so I'm allowed to have $270,000 or less in the bank. Is that what you're saying to me? Correct. Yep, absolutely. And then I get my New Zealand superannuation such as it will. Um, usually it would be probably single rather than married, I would imagine, in a yep. rest home situation. And then when you call me a fully funded client, how much does – so, and that's the issue where you come in. How much does the state pay for me to end up in a rest home? Um, so uh, uh, it, it depends on where you are in the country, but a, a, as an average, uh, a, a day, a rest home day rate sits at about one hundred and ninety dollars a day, um, and uh, that is covered by the state. Um, when you talked about that, you also get your pension. In fact, you don't when you go into residential care um, because that is diverted to the provider to. Uh, part pay that $190 a day. Uh, what you're left with out of your pension is uh, a fairly modest sum, perhaps sort of $35, $40 a week, and that's meant to cover um, small expendables um, such as... Um, Toothpaste, uh, things like that? So, yeah, 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 that yeah. sort of thing, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, uh, listen, uh, to be honest with you, I'm thinking that's quite generous. So $190 a day times seven, by my calculations, and I wasn't all that brilliant at maths, so I need to know, is $1,330 a week for yep. me paid for by the state in a rest home? Yep. yep. I'm pretty sure that I could make that work if I was a rest home proprietor, or do I need a certain number of people at 1330 to make it economic? Yeah, look, look actually, um, most providers simply can't make it work at $190 a day or give or take. Um, and the costs associated with delivering that care are really quite substantial. So there's clearly 24-7 nursing care, um, uh, care assistance. There's all the food provision. Um, there's an enormous amount of equipment uh, that has to go into providing that care. Uh, and then you've got the capital cost of providing that care facility uh, and the land on which it sits. Um, there has been a significant inquiry into the sector that was funded by uh, Health New Zealand, uh, done by a um, agency called Sapir. Uh, and uh, the first uh, stage of that, which was looking at what the issues are for the sector, uh, confirm that for most providers, um, they are losing money on that $190 a day. Really? So how yep. many people do I need in a proportionate scale to make it work? Because I look at a lot of rest homes and they're rather large homes. I don't know if they were nursing homes or something in the past, maybe small maternity hospitals or something like that. But I look yep. at them now and I, there might be 20, 25 people in them. How many proportionately do I need elderly folk to have in one of these places to get an economy of scale? You, you, you need uh, occupancy levels at around 95% to make things work, um, but you would probably need uh, a, a number of beds around the 55 to 60 mark level. And again, right. that's sort of being okay. uh, yep. uh, ascertained as sort of uh, probably being an e economic model. Yep. The, the the issue for the sector is that um, so many of the beds that we've got, and there are 35,000 beds uh, across New Zealand, um, and that's uh, held within sort of 670 providers. Uh, many of those facilities are 45, 50 years old, mm. um, and, and they were built at a time when the ministry determined what a minimum rate, uh, minimum size room would be. So... A lot of the rooms are still very small, sort of 12 to 15 square metres. And uh, for today's sort of client base that they come in, um, they're really looking for more than that. Um, and many of the rooms too don't have an ensuite. Um, and uh, so therefore people are having to walk down corridors to get to showers or bathrooms. 
and uh, that, that, that just doesn't sit well in terms of the population who are now coming through, who have lived through a period where houses have got bigger, people have had en suites in their own homes. So the expectations around uh, the uh, environment uh, in which you receive care has moved, but the funding hasn't moved to allow for that. 